prosperity of the 60s meant many Americans enjoyed a higher standard of living than ever before. By 1965, nearly half of college-age Americans were in college. Academic pressures were sometimes blown off in snowball fights or on spring vacations in Fort Lauderdale. The pressure was too much for Charles Whitman, a student at the University of Texas in Austin. In 1965, Whitman conducted a 94-minute shooting spree from the observation deck of the campus tower that left 16 people dead and 45 wounded. Most campuses were quiet in 1965. Getting diplomas and landing good jobs were the goals. Things were changing. Campuses reflected the changing moods of the country. Some students searched for alternatives and new directions by experimenting with drugs, especially marijuana. Some people even encouraged getting high. Former Harvard professor Timothy Leary told kids to tune in, turn on, and drop out. And millions did. According to a Playboy magazine survey in the late 60s, more than six million college kids had tried pot. By the end of the decade, the U.S. Public Health Service told us that more than 20 million Americans had smoked marijuana. There were other drugs. Tripping on speed or acid could alter your perceptions and sometimes take you on a bad trip. the lifestyle of the late 60s was bohemian. Dropouts from the corporate culture joined communes on campuses, in cities, and on farms. San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury was the capital of the counterculture. It was there that the kids with long hair, beads, and flowers were first called hippies, and the name caught on. newspapers, head shops, and free clinics soon transformed old neighborhoods in many cities. Mystical religions from the East became popular. The Maharishi Mahesh Yogi's program of transcendental meditation attracted thousands of followers. Rock festivals drew huge crowds in the late 60s. The biggest was Woodstock. Nearly half a million kids jammed onto a 600-acre dairy farm near Woodstock, New York in August 69 to dance, sing, smoke, and make love. Despite shortages of food and water and heavy rainstorms, Woodstock was a peaceful celebration. From now on, we would call these kids the Woodstock generation. Regardless of lifestyle, most Americans benefited from the prosperity of the late 60s. Few seemed worried about inflation. Gasoline was 33 cents a gallon. And when it got hot, lots of us headed for the beach. Usual afternoon thunder showers. It's 79 degrees. Hot smoke in Sassafras. That's by a group called the Bubble Puppy. Uh, they had that one hit five years ago and then dropped out of sight. Rumor has it that they are now in the aluminum siding business somewhere in the southwest. Summer vacations helped us forget our troubles. Time to relax, get a suntan, and people watch. One person almost everybody watched was Jacqueline Kennedy. She was always in the news, and her marriage to Aristotle Onassis in 68 made headlines worldwide. Hemlines, too, were in the news. The miniskirt became the rage, and women everywhere started to show their legs. Would you believe only five minutes ago, I simply sprayed away all my unwanted hair? I did it with neat spray. Here's how. I just sprayed it on and showered it off. Neat spray is even gentle enough for underarms. Unwanted hair goes right down the drain. Skin stays smoother days longer, too. Neat spray. The easy way to spray away unwanted hair. 
for centuries. Many women began to think of themselves as more than housewives in the 60s. Madison Avenue was quick to recognize their power as consumers with new products and new advertising. Cause of discomfort. Take Pampern at the first sign of water weight gain. Help relieve tension and discomfort before they start. The publication in 1963 of Betty Friedan's bestseller, The Feminine Mystique, caused women to re-examine traditional roles and to protest old stereotypes. During the Miss America pageant in 1968, women conducted demonstrations on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. Demanding freedom from the bondage of male chauvinism, many women began to seek professional careers. This emerging consciousness would soon be known as women's liberation. The times were changing. The late 60s were violent and frightening years. The issues of war and peace and the survival of the planet concerned more Americans than ever before. We were divided as a people, and our voices sometimes grew loud and angry. But whatever the issue or cause, most of us agreed we had the right to stand up, speak out, and march for what we believed in. And in time, the passions of these years would prove to be indications not of weakness, but of strength.